Hi guys, well today we're going to be checking out the MSI B560M Mortar Wi-Fi. So as you can see, this isn't quite a full-size board, but it conforms to the micro ATX form factor. So if you're wanting to build something which is condensed or a compact for Intel's 11th gen, then this might be ideal. As well as that, it features the slimmed down B560 chipset. Using B560 means that it comes in at a lower price tag, which could suit some of you who are trying to keep to a strict budget. Even though this board is on the cheaper side and is smaller, it still brings in some interesting features, such as USB 3.2 Gen 2 x 2 and Wi-Fi 6E. We've already hinted that this is a cheaper option, especially when you match it up to the Z590 platform. You guys can pick this board up here for around 170 in the US, 150 in the UK, and then 260 in Australia. And so this is a nice and affordable option and with that attractive price tag, it could be an ideal one for a move to Rocket Lake. The question is though, is there gonna be any cutbacks? Are there gonna be any compromises? Let's find out. Okay, so here we have Mortar. The design for this board is pretty simple and it doesn't adhere to the popular all black or monochrome themes that we tend to see a lot of. And instead, we have a base color of black but with silver being a feature throughout. The styling and the overall look is good and it will combine with other hardware very well. And unlike other boards, this one here lacks the integrated RGB which will be music to the ears of some of you out there. And I think it's warranted for the color scheme here. Plus, it also allows MSI to keep those costs down. Mortar is a micro ATX board and so it is noticeably smaller than a standard ATX offering but it will allow you to create a smaller condensed system. Mortar uses LGA 1200 so it has support there for both 10th and 11th gen processors but as always to get the most out of the platform it is better to go with Rocket Lake. Now in terms of the CPU cooler compatibility the mounting holes around the socket are in LGA 1151 alignment and so if you've got a cooler there for 1151 then it will fit. Just be sure to double check with that cooling manufacturer to see if that cooler is going to provide ample thermal performance. Now in terms of the power delivery, we have a 12 plus 2 plus 1 phase design and we get a digital PWM, something you may expect to see on a higher end MSI board. Covering the VRMs, we have the two heat sinks and in our web review we discovered that uh, both the VRM and the chipset cooling on this board are pretty good and so hats off to MSI for their efforts with this. Behind the top heatsink we have the CPU power which is an 8 plus 4 pin socket and in terms of the fan headers there are a total of 4 at the top, the bottom and the middle which is a bit of a drawback but then this is something you may expect from a smaller board like this. Moving on to the memory, we have dual channel DDR4 support, up to 128 gig and up to 5066 megahertz. This board uses MSI's DDR4 boost, which effectively isolates that signal to the CPU. Right next to the DDR4 section, we have a single USB 3.2 Gen 2 header and a USB 3.2 Gen 1 header down at the bottom of the board for your front panel connectivity. Moving on to the storage, we have six SATA 36G ports for any SATA based devices. And then we have two M.2 slots with one of them there being ready for PCI Express 4 and the other is PCI Express 3 and we should say that Gen 4 is only available with a Rocket Lake CPU and just the upper M.2 has a provided heatsink. If we take a look at the expansion area, we have one PCI Express 4 X16 and one PCI Express 3 X16 with an X1 in between the two. The top slot is wired there for the full 16 lanes. If you want to go for a multi-GPU configuration, that mode there is going to drop down to 4 and it is just AMD Crossfire that is supported, no NVIDIA SLI. And so it is best to use that top slot for a single card use. And MSI has equipped that top slot there to have the steel armor for longevity. To the immediate left of the PCI Express we have the audio solution which is based around the Realtek ALC897 codec. With that audio processor and the caps are all isolated to avoid signal interference. And finally we arrive at the rear panel for all the connectivity and that rear I.O. shield there is pre-attached. And so in this area we get the four USB 2 ports, HDMI and display ports, USB 3.2 Gen 2 x 2 type C and USB 3.2 Gen 1 type A, 2.5 gig Ethernet with two USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, two antennas there for the 802.11ax or the Wi-Fi 6E and then the 7.1 audio jacks with optical out. And so there is a lot of USB connectivity there but it is either USB 2 or USB 3.2 Gen 1, which is a bit of a disappointment. Even if we just had one extra Gen 2, that would be better. 
Well there you have it, that is the mortar. As far as micro ATX boards go and under the umbrella of Intel's 11th gen, this is a decent board which offers us the basics at an affordable price point. It comes in with PCI Express 4 as long as you do have that Rocket Lake CPU. And that therefore serves the graphics card and the M.2 storage. It may not have the Thunderbolt 4 on that back panel as we're seeing on some of these Z590 boards, but it does have USB 3.2 Gen 2 x 2 as well as Wi-Fi 6E and 2.5 gig Ethernet. And in terms of the overclocking ability of Mortar, we were able to hit 5 gig on all cores of our 11900K. There isn't a lot of headroom with the 11900K when you set an all core overclock. And our chip can do 5.3, but it isn't quite stable. 5 gig is the point of stability for our CPU. And we managed this with just 1.35 volts, which is a decent achievement when you think that other Z5 90s hit the same result. There are a few cutbacks with this board, it's a shame that we've got so many USB 2 instead of 3.2 and of the 3.2 that we've got they're pretty much all Gen 1. There are a few features missing as well which not everyone needs, uh, clear CMOS buttons, uh, the power and reset buttons which are on board and of course RGB lighting but without those things it means that we're getting a much more affordable option. So guys, if you want to see how this board here performs, check out our web review, which will be on the screen and in the description, the link for that. Um, it's going to have all the benchmarks, and as I showed earlier, this board here has solid chipset and VRM cooling. Thanks for all your continued support. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Take care, and I'll see you guys in the next one.